Why is shame such a powerful emotion? How does it affect us mentally, physically, emotionally? I'm Nadia Davis. I'm a mom, author, attorney, and kundalini yoga teacher who has experienced public shaming that brought me to my knees. On this podcast, I'm going to tell you how I'm living the work taking shame out of the shadows. I'll give you real life advice and skills to take away with you throughout your day. You'll hear from powerful guests who have overcome trauma and emerged stronger than ever. You too can ban the shame within and around you. Join me. You are not alone. Welcome home, everyone. We're here. We have dragged shame out of the shadows. Yes. See how it negatively affects your life, and we are transforming it into power. I encourage you to check out the last episode because there we gave you seven ways, and then as well as my personal ways, and how I know shame shows up. And it will help you to do what Dr. Stephen Polter, who's our guest again today, said identifying our inner narratives and then coming up with a counter belief. And today, mm-hmm. Dr. Simple Terre is going to talk about, this is the chapter title in his book, The Shame Factor, three big time changes, acceptance, empathy, and understanding. It's all within you. Home Amen. Is in you. Amen. Amen. Okay. okay. Dr. So with that said, I get asked questions all the time. Men go, do you want my support or do you want a solution? Uh, We're talking about solutions today. Yes. For the women listening, ladies, this, you can impart this to your husband, your sons, your partner, and I defer to you on timing. (laughs) At the right time, you need to say something, (laughs) you can say anything, anyone at the right time. At the wrong time, you blew the bridge up. So, right. Nadia, I defer to the listeners on when they uh, share this knowledge or uh, to get their partners to move forward. You I'll know, be- everything is built twice, I've learned. That, your mind oh. and then your reality. Do you know, I've never heard that. That's a cool, everything. That, that's the that's the that's the journey of life. Everything's built twice. Everything is built twice. And that's a very cool Very cool truth. I think I'm on the fifth building. But anyway, we're not going to go there. Um, (laughs) Right. I think think I'm on the fifth one. But with that said. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Okay. Nadia, we just, a little bit ago in our last episode, we talked hard and long about changing the narrative inside of you. So when we talk about three big changes, it's implying how you view yourself. All right. People always say, men, you say, men are brutal on other men because they're brutal on themselves. I'll ask guys, tell me what you're thinking. I go, tell me what you're really thinking. And they'll start talking. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Like, okay, okay, turn it down, turn it down. Okay, don't put the hammer down, put the sledgehammer down. You're not, you're good. People who are super critical, it all comes from within. And addressing that narrative requires three steps. Changing the narrative is realizing you, you need to change it and becoming aware of it, like we said earlier, like you've done in your book. You become aware of it. And shame is is in the ether. But once you recognize shame, you realize that's a smoke-filled room. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to live in and a smoke-filled you know, room. It's, it's impossible to build to get to a place of empathy without for, going for this road. men to get to a place mm-hmm. of empathy and human connection and for women. Yeah. Do you know, when Nadia? we don't see that impact of shame. And so people crave the three things every son wants from his father. And I'll talk about daughters in a second. He wants to be seen, understood, and approved of. All three are different. But the approval one, there's been movie after movie after movie done where the father withholds. You're not good enough. Seeing as I see you, you're not an extension of me. You're separate and apart. 
and understand. So this is the first acceptance Correct. where you're accepted, seen, right? I mean, approved of. When I was young, okay, like a lot of kids on our street back in the seventies had long hair, and people were up in arms. Oh my god, they had long hair! Now, I remember my dad saying to me, "Go get a haircut." <laughs> they just want you to see mm-hmm. them. Yeah. You see the kids at the mall with size 58 waist pants. They want you to see them. Mm-hmm. People want to be seen. Understood is, what's your story? What's your story? We have a story. Right. And every man has a story. And he gets to go with a, a partner. I'm going to say a partner. To share that story with and build a life with. All right? 2% don't. 98% of us do. We're going to talk to the 98% today, okay? The 2%, they're outliers. We wish them well, but they're not part of this discussion. Being 2%. Understand, 2% don't. Don't. Do not. They're just not. It's not capable. Yeah, not capable. Not wired. You know? Okay. It, it's like the car without a um, an air conditioner. It's just not installed. For what reason? We don't know. But we accept it. And lastly, uh, being seen, understood, and approval, approved of. It's like- Isn't that what we all long for? Crave. Crave. And you know, with the process with my children, my sons, Mm -hmm. three sons, that's it. It's Mm -hmm. it's if if at least I know that we let them know that Mm -hmm. no matter what, They are accepted, approved of. And loved. And loved unconditionally. Then we've done our job. Because then they can open up so we can understand them. Nadia, I did not use the word love. All interrelated. I did not use the word love because that's a given. But what does that mean for men? Men like translate that. All the time I find I'm translating. What love is, your dad approves of you. I see. But understood, yes, and accepted form of love. are different. Right, it's all a form of love. It's I see action. you. Yeah, I see you. To I see hear you, you, yeah, to see you, I've got to take time and know you. Right, it's very different. Right, very different. And if you're taking time, that's a very big act of love. Yes, a powerful act of love. It, One of know. my favorite things to do yeah. with my sons, because mm-hmm. I think it will affect their relationship with their father and their father's relationship with them. Mm-hmm. And w- woman, when we can look a man in the eye, mm-hmm. when we can look our son in the eye, when we can look a husband, partner, ex-husband and partner in the mm-hmm. eye, mm-hmm. one of the most powerful things I've learned is two seconds of Okay. Yes. Responding to something they're expressing, making sure that they know it is, it is heard. Mm -hmm. And that is how I can show respect, whether I'm feeling it within or not. Mm -hmm. Does wonders in the co-parenting does wonders in the teaching and disciplining, Mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, with my children, especially, especially with with the males in my life. I'm not in my head with you. Insight is an acquired skill, as is physical fitness. I get told by guys, I'm not insightful. Do you golf? Yeah. Do you work out? Yeah. You have insight. Okay. And they start laughing because they realize they just walked into it. Insight is putting time into you. I've met a lot of men. Yeah. I've worked with a lot of men. I know a lot of men. And I am one. Insight's an acquired skill. And that can lead to? The best Self-acceptance. Life, all the above. Yeah. Acceptance, being understood and approved of. It's important that we feel our dads approved of us. Okay. But majority of men don't feel like they got that. Like the client in my office last night who's drinking himself into oblivion, 
he doesn't feel his dad ever approved of him. And he's running from that. But while he's running from it, he's heading for the Grand Canyon. It's an eight mile drop. Metaphorically, it'll kill you. We know that. So where does one in his shoes and listeners begin yes. to have quote unquote insight into healing? But I find for men who are on a downward spiral, always ask them, what are you after? What's the end game? Where do you want this to go? In finance, there's always an end game. We want to buy the company and sell it. Or we want to do this or do that. There's always an end game. Men get that. Football or sports. You exactly, want to win. Nadia. Women are more abstract. I mean, I, I love that. Like, It's a process. For guys, it, what's the end game? The end game is you don't kill yourself because you don't feel or, like you're right. That's, so that's the extreme. Or yeah, that's the extreme. It's that yeah. you wake up without fear. That's the very yeah. abstract. Right. Or it's you, you are reunited with your children. Correct. Oh, yeah. And when that's they, the mid abstract. Yeah. That's you mm -hmm. have, you're happy today. You have something to look forward to. Okay. That's huge. So I want to go the opposite of acceptance is denial. Okay. And we say, what are you, what are you avoiding? What are you denying? And now this, now you take out a pick and a hammer. We're chipping away at, at granite. But the granite's not very thick. Because people say, how do I deal with my denial? Start accepting who you are. And let me tell you, Nadia, that is like a sandcastle getting hit by a huge wave. It just dissolves. It dissolves. And with that, understanding removes amnesia. And I mean literally amnesia. No, I don't remember that ever happening. Of course you do. You buried it. It's right. in there. And understanding shuts off avoidance. And that's where knowing your narratives mm -hmm. is so helpful because that is Nadia, that it's immaterial. Your, they're your survival skills too. It's like Nadia, the, they come from that. Your book, you make it very clear in the first section. You've got to go indoors to get the story. You got to go to inside to get the story. Right. A different middle. Correct. To right. understand the middle better of life to right. have a new end. So what you just said about understanding the narrative, if you're resisting your narrative, we're still in park. The car is in park. I uh, say so you don't gain experience driving with the car in park. You gain <laughs> experience driving the car. Get it out of park. Dude, get it out of park. <laughs> so we've yes. identified these core beliefs and narratives. Mm -hmm. Then with that the act the, of acceptance, yeah. the act of acceptance is terrifying. Treatment, jail, hospitalizations, the act of acceptance for me personally mm -hmm. is looking at that narrative. Is it, facing it and understanding it. That that is I believe an act of acceptance. Oh, it's a process. Nadia, we have a process. Now, you've been in the program for years. I've gone, we've all been in it. It's not a weekend course. It's but that's not, that's not to, to, you know, dissuade to, people. No, this no, stuff it's to gets encourage. Cool. It's awesome. This stuff gets cool. It's like, oh, there's that, there's that fear. There's that, you know. It's it easier. You know, walking. But it gets Cool. It, yeah. It cool. Cool. You get closer it, to people. You the build human feel connection. Better. It feels happiness within mm -hmm. self. Yes. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I, okay, I would, so that acceptance and un Yeah, the acceptance with self though. With self. You get to before. yourself. Okay, because that's an that's an ambiguous term in psychology. And, and okay. the, my new book I really break what is yourself? I just bottom line is your gut feeling. Yourself Everyone's got a self. People say, I don't, I don't know who myself. Do you ever get a gut feeling? Your, yeah. Your gut feeling. Okay. That your gut is instinct. yourself. That is your okay. inner self. That's your soul. He or she's talking to you. And you listen to them. And to the degree we listen to them, there's a lot of success that goes with that. 
And when we don't you listen know, to them. You know, in one of the episodes with Priya, we talk about mm-hmm. it's that imaginary friend too. Mm-hmm. Like, did you ever have those conversations with self when you were a child that, that, oh, that? Yeah. What is your soul, but it's just your gut instinct. We I, we all can relate to that. It, people go, I don't believe in souls. Okay, we don't need to. You got a gut feeling? Your gut. Yeah. Did you buy a house? Yeah. What was your gut feeling? Oh, it was a good move. Okay. That. And when do you, yes. That's it. And when, and when you're feeling, quote unquote, in your element, mm-hmm. I can tell when my kids or my oldest son who's 20 versus the eight year old are mm-hmm. in the present, in their element. And I know when mine aren't. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I they know when I'm not either. So we, we got that. That's something we have in common. Yeah, today. that's our gut. Mm-hmm. That's your the self. Oh, my God. Okay. So everyone's got a self. Listeners, okay. wherever you are right now, you have a self. We need to develop that muscle. Got to develop it. Like meditation, the more... I mean, if I can meditate, squirrels can meditate, right? Anybody can meditate. Because meditate is sitting with yourself. What's yourself? I get asked that question, Nadia, every week. Every week. Yeah. And I get asked by people you never think would ask me. Like, yeah, not people you would, you know, people you would assume have a lot of insight. But the idea of yourself. That's like the grounding. That's like the home in the center. It's yep. not a connection to a higher power Mm-mm. or quote unquote God, no. the universe. No, it's, it's, it's not mindfulness even. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's r- sit there right in the middle with like your soul, your, your d- internal you know, dialogue. That is yourself. Nadia, that is I, the centering. I deal with people that are uh, very, uh, I want to say almost, I'll call them atheists for lack of a better term. And they're highly educated, wealthier than wealth. I start this words and they go, oh, we're not doing that. Okay. Tell me about your gut instincts. And we start talking about it. I go, that's what we're talking about. That's your soul. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. You got to find the light. Okay. You got to translate who you're talking to. But that's it. Increase that dialogue. Increase that dialogue. So rewriting your inner narrative, you could talk about that. You're, you're a moment of awakening, changing. Rewrite that narrative, Nadia. You've seen it. You've done it. You've written the book. You got. You know the benefit of it. You know the benefit. And it connected with the little girl. That was how I got to self. I, you know, something. Let's just go there for a minute. Look at a picture of, mm-hmm. of you as the little girl, a little boy, mm-hmm. men listening. Look your little boy in the eye. That's another way. Oof, oof. That's big. So, I heard Bradley Cooper was a clip on Instagram this week, and he's interviewed a number of years ago by Barbara Walters. And mm-hmm. I love this. And I heard um, another one, uh, God, I'm blanking on his name, but she asked him, what's the hardest part about being a, in recovery? Recovery is easy. The hard part was making the decision. Mm. I love that. To get into recovery? Yeah, to decide to get to recovery, that was the hardest decision. Once he started mm-hmm. doing it, once he made the decision, it just went. For men, making the decision to heal is the biggest decision you can make. Well, one is physical presence, and two is looking in. Right. Look. It's the, who's the star of um, all those um, Marvel who's recovered? I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Um, Downey, Robert Downey Jr. He, yeah. He's been interviewed. He said – my biggest challenge was deciding to be in recovery. Once I decided, mm-hmm. it went. And for men, making that decision to go down that yes. road, then it gets easier. To look within, to, to see but you what have on to make earth that, is this You have to make self, that decision self. to look. It's monumental. Right. It's, and often it's, yeah. it takes, hopefully it doesn't, it takes... Just now, they say in the East, sometimes it takes many lifetimes. Okay, I know we don't, yes, in the West, we don't believe in reincarnation, but for the sake of discussion, we have to master certain things in, in these lives, in this life. And if we don't, it's not going away, it's not going away. Not going away. And you know, my mom, mm-hmm. 88, we were talking about, um, so afraid of being alone. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
Can we talk about that? Men and women. And 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 right now is the opportunity to be okay. How are you going to be right here, right now, today? You know, alone with yourself. But you're not alone. You're not. See, that's a pair. I get guys. I got a guy. He's seventy-eight, retired lawyer, done very, very well. And he said, you know, his wife. He goes, I've never been alone. I don't. I don't know how to do. I go. What are you talking about? You're with yourself. How can you be alone? And it, it's such a common feeling. It's no, that it's, core you know, it's, like separation. Okay, that's Maya. So start the dialogue now mm-hmm. with our, I mean, it sounds so cliche, no. with our inner child. Okay, and, Nadia, let, let's use some other words. it's your gut instinct. Okay, let's, let's. It's your intuition. It's, it's your like gut your knowing. feeling. Let's use, yes. some, let's use non-buzzwords because people like, okay, I've heard that. my inner child. But the inner child's important. So I told my client who's 78, I go, what's your gut feeling about stuff? I asked him questions about college football, the Dodgers, what? Boom, boom, boom. He had gut feeling. I go, that's your, you're not alone. There's that part of you, you think you have to go outside to connect with him. No, right. you gotta go inside. It, it's a way of thinking. And I can't tell you, narcissistic men have many things gone. One of them, they can't be with themselves. Right. But they can, because if they are, they're not narcissistic. It's a paradox. When you accept yourself, there's no longer the fight. Yes. There's no longer the war. And you don't have to abuse every woman you ever meet because your mother right. was aloof or abusive. I deal with some difficult narcissistic men. I'm glad they're in my office. And the moment they change is the moment they're able to sit with their self. Narcissists change. That rage is the minute it could be in in a second is when they look and accept themselves. It's a lack of acceptance that builds the wall, the great wall of China in their life. That just steamrolls everybody. It's super painful experience. It's super to painful. Be in that circle. And the way I treat narcissistic men is we work on self acceptance, not self bravado. Very different. Suck acceptance. It might be that skinny and little boy. And now I know why they're so attracted to the ex- extremely authentic, empathic. Oh, they're looking for that and- feeling. They're understanding hoping. in me. They're looking for that in themselves. Right. They're hoping you okay. can get them there. That's acceptance. Number two, with acceptance comes understanding of yourself so you can identify with other people. You can't identify with other people unless you understand yourself. You can't. It's it's incompatible. Empathy is I, I can hold your pain because I have my own I hold. I know I and acceptance pain. of the self, Correct. another tool when we're talking about this mm-hmm. thing called the self, yeah, is gut, your if gut feeling. you close your eyes right now, mm-hmm. wherever you're listening to this podcast, mm-hmm. and you think of someone you love. Yeah. Absolutely. They come in mind. There's a visual and there's mm-hmm. a, a feeling. That is that person's self. Yeah. That is that feeling. And so if... Start by seeing yourself in the mirror. And if that's too hard, a picture of you as a child. And you'll start differentiating between a a moment's thought versus yourself. Yep. Absolutely. Because now you have the question, and then with empathy comes understanding. When you understand yourself and you forgive yourself for not knowing what to do at age seven or when you're 17 and this happened or these different things that happen, like understanding breeds a stronger sense of self and your connection to him or her. An inner person. Yes. An inner person. Let's just call it a person. It is a person. You know, you know like you said, your physical body, your spiritual body, your emotional body, it, it connects to them. And shame unplugs us from our 
gut feelings. Yes, and separates us from this connection to self. Correct. Our superpower. So if you ma- what helped me again is like mapping it out in mm-hmm. my head. It's like yeah. here I am. Mm-hmm. Here's myself, my arc around me. Mm-hmm. I and- have my thoughts and my mind on my right side and I have the mm-hmm. soul on the left right here in the middle. I can invite the child in. I can mm-hmm. you start can- to observe the thoughts um, with and breath the- and slowly, mm-hmm. slowly this, this can build inside you and, and you start to use the separation to your advantage. Yeah. It, the, the sense of separation becomes like, oh, okay, I'm going to watch that. I see it. But right here in the middle is me. Correct. And that breeds mm-hmm. the understanding you're talking about. Correct. And there's several chapters on but, describing that process in the book. Yeah. And and with the minute it can take, it can happen in a day, a year, or at some point in your life, when you are able to acknowledge the critical narrative in your head, that is a fork in the road in your life. And hopefully it doesn't come through tragedy, or whatever. People say it's rock bottom, but that narrative. Once it's exposed, it's how you talk to yourself. Okay. It's how you talk to yourself. That's a narrative. How you interpret life, how you speak to yourself. I love that you said that. Once that narrative is exposed. Now you're on the highway to healing. You're no longer can you it. say yours right. for listeners, Dr. Your, Polter? Yeah. What was your narrative? My narrative. One. Uh, one of them was not being smart enough or can't read well and that self-doubt and once i accepted it really looked at that square in the eye it's like that's okay i don't i don't need to do that i don't have it's like it was all smoke and mirrors i see it was all smoke and mirrors you know and that it was a belief and that's it was erroneous it wasn't you correct and recently, I just I did the audio book for a um, modern masculinity. I didn't share this, but I will. The, as soon as we start, before we start, maybe in my life I've had two or three times I thought I was gonna have a panic attack. Maybe once. This was number three. I thought, oh my god, I'm gonna read to the world. And all my life I thought I couldn't read. I said, no, you're gonna read. Go read this. At that moment just blew the doors open. Even at my age now, like go read, go do this audio book. I went, oh, okay. And that's how it went. But I, I, it was like, as much as I think I've grown, I, I'm always, oh, got to keep going. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, I really had to look at that square in the eye. And looking at square in the eye, that that's where you're aiming with a modern All, masculinity. Correct, for men. It's, it's the men. Yep. Looking at what's at holding a them core back. belief in the eye. Yeah. That Same belief one. was still there, way down there at the bottom of the cellar. The idea of reading, you know, I had a speech impediment growing up. So it was a lot of shame around that. I had a hard time speaking when I was younger. I had to go and so class. as you're recording the audio book, wow, I just here went, you are, ugh. successful doctor man, <laughs> and you're recording kind. this audio book. <laughs> And the little boy is right there. Yeah. And, and he's all of a like, sudden you realize. And that there's no regrets. But I'm thinking, God, where else do I hold them? Where else do I put the car and park? I say this to men all the time. Where else do you park your life where you really shouldn't be parking it? You should be moving it. I'm not talking about action, but internally. 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 And you, mm-hmm. the interesting thing is the belief is still there. But it's lost its power. It got outed again. And each time it gets outed, it gets weaker. That's each beautiful. time you expose it, it just gets weaker. And that's the process. That's the process. So, Nadia, thank you for asking that. Those, that's a really good question. But I remember sitting there, right here I am. I'm like, <clears throat> 
just breathe. Go slow. This was last month, folks. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're talking like four weeks ago. Yeah, not four years ago. Four weeks ago. And I was perspiring like I was running. <laughs> I went, oh, my God. It wasn't easy. It was like running uphill. I thought, no, 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 no. We're going to do this. And then when I heard it, I, I got to finish with Then when I heard it, I went, oh. And I thought, no. My inner, my inner self said, it's good enough. Leave it. Right. That was that acceptance and understanding. I'm telling you, it was profound. I was walking upstairs, holding my phone, sharing it with my wife. I go, oh, God, I don't think. I, I, no. It's good enough. And I let it go. That's taken a long time to get there. It's good enough. And I've had people give me That's feedback. beautiful. People give me feedback, this or that. It doesn't matter. It's good enough. Your inner narrative of you can't read that carries oh. throughout your life that used to consume you and paralyze you and keep you separate and without real genuine human connection in your head mm -hmm. today. Come, you recognize it. You know the inner narrative like you're recommending. Oh, and you've come Nadia? with a counter belief, a counter inner yeah. mantra. And just like that. Nadia, no, it it's was, not. I can't read. It's it's good enough. It's gonna. I, I literally walked upstairs, and like we're talking like two weeks ago. I go, honey, it's here. <gasps> she said, I bet it sounds great. I go, and I started that road like, mm, and my inner self said, no, it's good enough. So I'm gonna tell God, it's good enough, guys. I'm not gonna be a prisoner of perfection. Love it. So Nadia, it's great to be with you today. I look forward to doing more with you. You're the best. Okay, everyone. Home is within you. Talk to that inner little boy, that inner yes. little girl, and say, okay, we know the narrative now. We are going to flip it by accepting it and transform it into a power where in that understanding and acceptance, you're conquering shame and you're able to be present and there's so many blessings oh my goodness so many blessings nadia okay. and we're good enough yes good enough isn't a c minus good enough is freedom is an a plus yep okay folks love, ya. Thank love you, you thank you dr Poulter. thank you nadia, as always you're the best take care you are not alone if you are dealing with shame and trauma please reach out to me through my website, nadia-davis.com. You can get a free band shame tip sheet and find out about upcoming events. I'd love it if you picked up my book, Home is Within You, wherever books are sold. If you like this podcast, please tell a friend, leave a review, and make sure to follow me on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sending warm hugs.